Okay, so you know how sometimes you go to a movie, right? And you're enchanted in story, in cinema, and you're completely lost in the moment. And blip, it's like you come out of a wormhole. So much time has passed. The world has passed you by, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then... It's pouring outside in, you know, in this case when you get out. Sure, that can happen. That happened. But then... This week. Well, but then, you know, you're like, oh, let's let's check some scores. What happened in this game? Maybe you went to the movies during, like, a, a playoff game, and you're like, holy shit, how'd that happen? What a crazy result. And then sometimes you walk out of the movie, and Donald Trump gets assassinated. <laughs> And you're like, whoa, that's crazy. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But that that was a crazy way to walk out of a movie. We're talking about long legs today. Yeah, wow. What a lead in. Off the dome. You know me. That that, that happened to you. Wheezy in the booth. Yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. We went to like the 445, Uh 450 showing. No, it happened earlier in the day. It happened at like 6 p.m. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, or five, whatever. We, like, just missed it. Crazy. And uh, so that was wild. So this movie will be ever in, forever entangled. Uh, welcome to Requiem for a Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Pacora here with the juice. <laughs> hey. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Rate, review, and subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday. Check out all the links in the description below. We got lots of good stuff, but let's just get right into it, Poppy. Yeah. What'd you, you just, think? You just uh, thank you for handing it off. I thought it was fun. Long legs. Yeah. Okay. A fun, you know, tale cut up in three sections. Really fun. Yeah. Beginning. Really fun ending. Was it? I think so. Okay. I thought when you said you had some thoughts, I didn't, that doesn't, I don't infer that they're going to be positive when somebody (laughs) says something like that. I assume that they will have a hot take. That, okay, well. First of all. I don't go right into the hot take for sure because I did enjoy parts of this film. The only thing, I'm going to say it once here up top, by the way, we do this for all current new releases. Yeah, we're spoiling it all, baby. We're going in whatever order we want, and we're saying it, and uh, hundred percent, we're out of control. So, see it first if you care. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, biggest part. That's why I'm. I don't know. I just I I feel like we don't want to take away from like the essence of the film because it was very like it had a vibe the whole time you know but there's definitely yeah something... consistently too i would say it held up the vibe yeah but there's until the no until the end i take that back i i don't know if you do you want to go straight to the end too? all right no let's just let's go in order and then we'll do the we'll do the final Overall opinion, but at like the end. Nick that makes Cage more sense. per usual delivers as I this very, a, uh, a very, in a very ironic way. I feel like. Well, okay, let's get into it. So it's <laughs> let's get right into it. <laughs> we're, we're still se- twenty minutes in. We'll get right into it. That opening segment. So it opens with yeah. like a square shot vintage film camera thing, and it's very eerie and creepy, and there's basically just like a dude in a station wagon spying on a little girl. I think that all was really... And I was ready for a thrill ride. Exactly. Because it was of that intro. incredible. I will say right off the bat, the filmmaking entirely in the movie is all great. The technical aspect... Of just that, the direction, the camera work, the pacing even was good. I got no complaints. No, no, the pacing was good in the beginning. That's a huge. Well, that's a that huge is issue. True. I think. So this was a very slow, drawn out, dramatic scene with not a lot of words, and you didn't really know what was going to happen. And Playing then, with like the perspective of the shots, it was very it, adventurous and very quick. fun. And it was quick, but it was it was thrilling. Very thrilling. Know? Very thrilling. And then, boom, all of a sudden, you 
there's like some grandma talking to the little girl snuck up on her. Nope, Nicolas Cage looking crazy and horrifying. And then it's boom, title, we're here. It's starting. Yeah, that slow pan out from that vintage one by one aspect. For it to go wide, that to, was a nice when it touch. Went wide. It was thoughtful. But then it like almost like literally like lost its flame for about 30 minutes. Really? No, yes. see I thought the whole intro was great. No, I think that the main character um was it was like stressful to watch her go through all of that. That's the point though. It, it that's I was like not ready for like it was almost This movie, okay, no. Okay, we left out one big thing here. This movie was marketed very heavily and very effectively because it drew me in right away to go see it. And I didn't watch a trailer and maybe that's my fault, but purely in marketing, it was marked as this like new generational horror movie, like Nicolas Cage is as terrifying as any killer has ever been in a movie. And that this is like a very special, terrifying, like generational film. And it is not any of that. Yeah. And that is my real problem. And that's where it starts, I think, right here to why I was into it, because I was expecting something very tense and dark and heavy the whole time. I thought this was going to be like a brutal, dark, like seven, but more horror based and gory instead yeah. of, you know, detective y and thrillery. But then it turns out it is very detective-y, which I'm also into right off the bat, where she's an FBI agent and she just... Here, they also abandon this right away, so I don't know why they do this at the beginning, but they show her have a hunch that she knows where the perp is right away. The guy answers the door, her partner, and he just gets shot right in the head. And it's very intense and very thrilling right off the bat, and you're like, holy shit, this movie's gonna be this dark evil masterpiece but then what happened that's a very good point actually and then she get, basically gets promoted off of that for being correct essentially and catching the guy because he just kind of gives himself up after shooting the one agent with that that doesn't really make any sense but it doesn't right. matter we're just trying to intro the character i get it like it's fine this isn't the killer they're after they're kind of like misleading you to assume like, oh, she's just going to catch long legs right away. Right. And this movie's going to get thrown on its head. But no, that's not what happens. It's just some other perp. She's on some other case. So she essentially gets promoted off of that. But it's also, and they make a point to point it out, that she's like clairvoyant in yeah. some way. And it's just a total like misguided throwaway waste thing. Um, it doesn't become relevant again. Her um, clairvoyancy? Yeah. No, it it does, though. Because the whole reason she's able... Well, we have to jump ahead to explain why it's not. Because... Yeah. It's just revealed that it's just been her... It's... She's, oh, she's just been a victim the whole time. Correct. That's why, yeah, 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 yeah. So she's able to solve it because of how close she is to it. And maybe they... It's an excuse for the FBI to perceive her as just very good and psychic. I guess that's what it is. So that, that they don't look into right. her sooner and it kind of helps the end get there. Okay, you talked me into that. That's fine. But <laughs> it still doesn't seem that relevant. It doesn't seem like that's why she's solving it to me. Like, I don't know. Because all she does is like her solve. clairvoyancy is not the reason the why killer she leaves, solved it. It's the, killer the reason leaves, why she solved it is because she was a victim to it for the, sure. The killer leaves coded letters like Zodiac, right? And she cracks the codes really quickly, but that doesn't seem like that would be psychic. It just seems like autistic. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, whoa, I wouldn't say it takes a psychic to solve a thing like that. It just seems like she's very good at puzzle solving. Right. Like right. she's a good detective. You know right. what I mean? Um, so anyway, that's basically the first part, right? What happens after that? Like, she clearly has a weird once relationship gets, with her mom, but they don't really get into why. Once that happens to her partner and she gets the promotion, that is when she just literally starts to focus on 
Long legs. Long legs. Right. And like be allowed to do all of that research too. Because oh, it you seems know like she's been putting it off she or starts, something. She starts cracking the codes and then all of a sudden isn't ne- the next part when he shows up at the house? In her house. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, no. Okay. So next what happens is I got it now. Um, she connects all the patterns of the murders. So they're there are each family that is a victim of this. Basically what happens with the long legs killer is the entire family is murdered. And the husband is usually the murderer of the entire family. And then he kills himself is how it appears. So there is no evidence that long legs ever enters the home in any way. So that's why he has been uncatchable for so long. They say that it's been going on for like 30 years, I think. So anyway, each family has a nine-year-old daughter born on the 14th of the month, and the murders all occurred within six days before or after the birthday. Uh, When written out on a linear calendar, the dates of the murders form an occult symbol of an inverted shape, basically signifying that it's a satanic ritual that's happening. Um After and then right after that is when she gets tricked into going outside and someone goes in her house and then there's a birthday card addressed to her that allows her to crack the code. That's what it was. So she was just like given that clue. Right. So that was weird. Um, Through this entire process, all I'm thinking is that is like the but it also occult th- aspect of this like that's really what you're left to wonder about it does also, because it keeps panning to him doing weird things that you're not really sure they're just like obscure shots of him it does also uh say that it'll hurt that like her mom will die or something if she tells anybody about it so she doesn't report it to the FBI that any of it happened which i'm like I would tell him I my would mom. go to your mom. I would go to your mom's house and pick her up and drive her to the FBI station and say, here's this threat to my mom. Yeah, because I'm in the FBI and they'll listen and they'll protect my mom. It's weird. That- the murderer is not going to show up to the FBI. You know what I mean? Anyway. Yes. It also does cut to Nicolas Cage in weird vignettes being creepy, but not really evil or scary. Um, Especially in comparison to the initial scene, as we said, which was genuinely pretty terrifying. Yeah. Um, Next, they find a doll buried underneath one of the previous house murders locations. It's like under some it's like a farmhouse. Right. And then like in one of the barns underneath, there's a doll. It's built in the upstairs, not in the downstairs. Was it in the upstairs? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, I think. I don't remember. It was weird. I thought I remember, that, but they pried up a floor, though, either way. So it was underneath yes. a floor. It was in a floorboard. Yeah. Okay. And it was weird. And it was like... And they basically take it to, like, the forensic guy who looks at corpses. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. They're... And it was like a weird comic scene where he's like, oh, this is good plastic or something. No, it's good. it's good craftsmanship or whatever. Yeah. And then they find a ball in its head, and the guy's like, there's nothing in it. And then the FBI guy's like, well, can you cut it open and take a look? And he's like, yeah, no point. There's nothing in it. And the guy just goes, all right. And then he <laughs> leaves. And it's very clear that there's going to be something there. Like, they're, you know, big red letters on screen. Like, this is going to be relevant, and it doesn't pay off, but we'll get there. Uh, what happens next? What happens next? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The the whole <laughs> doll thing. Like that's the basically the reason why people have been killing their families is well. The doll. And she sees weird visions when she touches it. That was also weird. The the orb. 
She like grabs it and hears like a radio frequency and then like has visions. She doesn't even have to grab it. The, he just unveils it. Right. And it's like ringing in her head. Yeah. So that's weird. And you're like, what's going on with that? And then she puts together, wink, wink, that each family received a doll. Yeah. And he's been infusing the orbs within the doll with some sort of evil energy that can possess and influence those that near it. And uh, you, you just kind of go, lose me. Uh, this movie was incredibly like real the whole time. And now we're just like, oh, it's black magic. It must be. And it's like, you're in the FBI. And now we're in fantasy land all of a sudden. Right. And again, every time we show Nicolas Cage, he's just like doing a bit. Right. And isn't scary. And why are we working backwards here? Like this was like. Really, that's why I liked, like I said, the really dark beginning because I thought it was just the path we were going on, right? Combined with the marketing, but now we're doing black magic with skits, um, and then next, she discovers finally that long legs visited her. Or they no, they go to the crazy girl in the asylum. She's the one survivor because she was like out of town or something. And he has already visited her, Long just Legs like right was before there earlier in the day. Yeah, and they missed that. <laughs> yeah, know? not on top of it. They're like, the do FBI. you use IDs? And they're like, we no, should. That sounds like a good idea. You know, I forget that this movie is supposed to be taking place in what seems like the 80s, the right? The 90s, I believe. Okay. G- because yeah. Because they said they've been happening for 30 years, and the first one was in the 60s. Okay. So I just assumed it was the 90s. Ridiculous. You you forget until that and yeah, happens. Yeah, they're poking fun at, like, oh, it's the past. We didn't care. <laughs> this is why we couldn't catch these guys. <laughs> um, so that is kind of fun. Um, but then the girl's basically just like, I don't give a fuck what you people say. Like, I'm going to kill myself for this guy. He told me to. Yeah. And it's like, oh, OK. So he's kind of scary again. What does that mean? And that doesn't really go anywhere. Unfortunately, we're, we're still getting there. And then she goes to visit her mom and then she finds a picture of long legs. And it's basically confirming now, which they would kind of been hinting at the whole time. That the girl in the beginning in the little vignette was, was her. her. Yeah. Um, I didn't believe that until we got a, to about right there. Oh, really? They were hinting at it. I kind of put it together. Especially when she w- ta- was talking to the mom and the mom was like denying her to like look at stuff. And it was just weird. There was clearly something she was hiding from her. Yeah. Um. So then she gives the picture to the FBI and then they, they track him down in one second. And it's a joke scene. Yep. He's at the bus. Yep. With suitcases. Which I didn't like that. Be- because again. What's going on? You're telling me the most terrifying portrayal of a serial killer in decades. And it's like, what are we doing? The whole thing's a bit. Right. And he's being, he's still doing like good acting. Right. But as a cartoon man. It was really fun. He was fun. Yeah. But don't market it to me as a scary guy. As he's horrifying and like well he's doing another tier of horror genre like terrifying. I think that he is. I think that he's doing like a I'm a I'm a satanist kind of thing, you know? Like a really wacky Yeah, but he guy. was just being Madman Nicolas Cage. He kind of does the same type of performance in every movie, even if they are all distinct, which is impressive. It's still the same manic energy. This one felt aged a little bit. Like he, you could like he feel was almost. We- he's leaning into the weathered body that he is, you know. I suppose. Anyway, then they bring him in for questioning, and it just goes nowhere. It's absolutely just silly. He's a lunatic. There was whatever he d- he has like a little monologue that's a little bit dark. Um, and then he bangs his face on the table, and you would think, oh, he, he kills does- himself, but he does it once. He's in handcuffs. You're an FBI agent. You don't back away. You don't let the witness kill himself because you want the witness. Like, you're in the FBI. If the movie is about a low-level police officer who's new on the force, whatever, an FBI agent subdues that guy. He's he's an old-ass man. Right. Like, just because he's big 
and you have all the other people like they'll come help you in a few seconds. They right. were on their way. You just watch a 30 year serial killer suspect just bang his face on the table for three minutes. You know, that also wouldn't kill somebody. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do that hard enough multiple times. Like you would just knock yourself out. Right. So the, all of that was too dumb. It's there was dumb a, that she I think there's supposed to be a possession aspect there that like it's he like he controls her. That that Satan controls him. That, that he, he could do that to himself, I yes. guess. But why wouldn't she just try? I under yeah, uh, I agree with you on that. That for just sure. doesn't make any sense. It's like you're in the FBI. Yeah, he. I mean, she would get in trouble. You know how serious the FBI? Well, I mean, they were mad at her, but yeah, what? That's not enough. No, no. You would literally be like demoted for you, something like definitely. that. Definitely. Like you just ruined the entire case. It doesn't matter that you helped find him. If you fucking blow it. And how is nobody uh, monitoring that, you know? Because they talked Why for a would while. she even be there alone? That's not how questioning works. Nope. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. Yeah. Why would she be the one? Like, her boss would definitely be with her. He's the, He's running the case. He wouldn't be letting her do it, is the truth. That's right. the thing. She's like, it's, especially if they know that she's connected because she had the picture. She already admitted under, to I it. I feel like it's implied that like that's bef- literally a what a fucking something of interest. A person of yeah, a person of interest. No, she's a whatever. She's because she's connected to it. She shouldn't be allowed to even be in the room. That's true. You know what I mean? I can't think of the term right now. But the idea is that they were supposed to, they like they were supposed to have never had that on record, other than her her mom calling the police. That's the thing. That's the only connection. But and she had the photo. I don't think that they ever. She gave it to her boss. That's how they picked him up. Yeah, they ne- they only showed that. She was presenting it. They never showed how it showed what happened like after that. You know, they never showed who well, I know that. But just her encounter with him alone. Conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. That's what it is. Well, she's I don't think that she could be proven as a conflict of interest yet, even if she gave him the picture. That is the proof. That's what I'm saying. Maybe they don't know who submitted it. Maybe she, she, she hand. they showed it on screen. She handed it. I to know him. that, but I mean to the rest of the, you know, that's air. how it works. Everything's reported. It's that not everybody reports everything. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to say. But the boss is the one who she handed it to. He would be the one who lets her in the room alone. He would know that she's a conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> You're nonsense. <laughs> You're such a silly boy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> anyway, now where are we even at? Yeah, so he kills himself. He says, Hail Satan. It's silly. So then she drives to her house. Uh, they finally realize the mo- that her mom is connected somehow. I don't remember. But then she shows up there. And... Basically, she does like a roundabout walk and the person she's with just gets shot in the head with a shotgun by her mom. Yeah. The other FBI agent. First of all, you're in the FBI. You don't see someone in your rearview mirror. Right. Your peripherals are on at all times. Like you're in the FBI. Yep. Come on now. Um, It's absurd. Also, like. Someone in the FBI was just murdered. There's 500 police officers and higher in pursuit of that house in 10 seconds. Like what? I don't get it. Her daughter's instinct is never call it in. Call it in. True. An FBI agent was just murdered. The army will be there in 10 seconds. Like, do you know what I'm saying? That was scary. (laughs) Uh, So just absurd, frankly. And then... When she tells her mom that Long Legs is dead, she shoots one of the dolls and some little gas comes out. That's Satan. And she's unconscious. And then 
she wakes up in Longlegs' bed, which is in their basement. So Longlegs lived with her her whole life, and she either knew or didn't know. It's unclear that she may have just blacked all of that out. I think that she didn't know. It seems like she didn't know. seems impossible that you wouldn't know that. Right. Just absurd. An over-twist. Yeah. Reveal that, like, the garage has a basement. Right. Like, a secret thing. He just lives in your basement? I just... That that whole part, I was... What are we doing? I was shocked, you know? But... And then they reveal that what happened is when the mom catches him talking to her in the vignette at the beginning of the thing. Well, that's what happens next. So he shows up and he's like, I'm long legs to the little girl who is now the main character of the movie. But this is the past. (laughs) Right after that, her mom comes outside and is like, who the fuck are you? Get the fuck out of here. And he's like, I'm from the church. That's his old gimmick. I'm from the church. This is a gift for the family from the church. Mm -hmm. And then she's basically like sniffs it out because he's a giant creep talking to a child. Uh, get the fuck out of here, whatever, whatever. And then he just like comes back later that night and ties her up. And is like, you can either be my accomplice or I'm going to murder you all. Basically. And it's like, okay, wait, so he is a murderer. Okay, yeah. we're finally going to reveal how all these families have been dying. Like, which was supposed to be the point of the movie. I thought, like, because they led with all this detective stuff leading up. You think the point is like, oh, we're going to. Figure out how he's doing these crimes. But we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. It was already revealed. It's Mm -hmm. the dolls. The dolls have evil spirits that possess the family, and they just compel them to kill all of themselves. Which... And it's all for Satan. Correct. It's all for Satan is the thing. But the mom basically as a woman of the church, just believed in the church so much that she had to believe in the devil so she never stopped doing it is basically the logic. Yeah. But she lets him live in his base in her basement eventually. It's like or the whole time. I think the whole time. But then also she's willing basically her role is to just because she's a nun, whatever, whatever her thing is. She is convincing enough that people believe her to give the dolls so the murders actually work. Assuming he gets rejected a lot, being a giant fucking freak, <laughs> is yeah, basically yeah. what they imply. So he just needs her to be believable. And that, and she just agrees because she's super religious. But she's willing to kill an FBI agent, knowing that her daughter's in the FBI, but she won't kill her daughter because the reason she's doing it is to protect her daughter. But she won't just kill the guy who's living in her basement. And end it. Because now I get it. At this point, she's been doing it 30 years. She's completely warped. Like, she's a psycho. I understand it. She's just a serial killer herself at this point. Like, she's the killer is the thing. And Long Legs has always just been the Satan crazy guy. But she has now turned into a psychopath. Right. But in the past, leading up to this, you know? Like, maybe even before he moves in, let's say. (laughs) Because you don't know where he is, so that's a scary element. He could show up at any time. But when you know he lives in your basement, you're probably feeding the guy. You know? Billion opportunities to just wrap this up a lot sooner. Right. Or you go to the FBI, and you go, hey, he's in my fucking basement holding me prisoner. Wrap this up. Right. You know? Just super flimsy. And... Again, so it all wraps up, I should say. There is one last thing. She goes to the boss's house, her boss's house, because it was supposed to be her kid's birthday. Turns out kid's birthday is within the long legs thing. She's the last the victim. Yeah, that was set up right before he was captured. Um, And they're all just possessed by the doll, and they're all obsessed with it, and the... Uh, her boss is very clearly about to murder his wife and she's into it. And then he does and they don't she doesn't stop him. She could stop him. But she doesn't. She just stands there and lets him murder her in the kitchen for no reason. Right. 
Uh, and yeah, they're just possessed. It doesn't work. And her mom is there also giving them the doll, obviously. And her mom like tries to, st- oh, her mom tries to stop her from intervening and then she has to kill her mom. And then she tries to save the girl, but is held up by the doll. She's mesmerized by it as well. And then it just ends. Um, so yeah. Long Legs was just a Satanist who literally was able to conjure real Satan spirit magic. Into, t- into and, balls. And infuse it into metal balls that he put inside of dolls that he had to force a nun to drop off at people's houses that possessed the families to kill themselves. And he would include a letter. And that's not scary at all, and that's stupid, and... He wasn't scary at all, and that movie sucked because of all of that. Like, it was super good leading up to it just falling apart and being about nothing and having just a fake bullshit nothing twist. Like, I could have lived with the twist being that he lived at the house if there was still some, like, really smart, like, and now we'll show you how they did it as a team. Because she was alluding that he must have had help the whole time because there's just no way he could pull this off without help so that's fine but let's reveal a way that two people were able to pull it off no possession magic irresistible dolls that caused you to kill your family and kid and self it's gonna really hurt toy sales i mean what the fuck and like here's the thing i understand that marketing is always a lie when it's just like, great, this was great. Somebody said it was great, because technically that's not a lie if I can quote somebody, you know? Or I can give you a Rotten Tomatoes score that seems all right. And what's that, the, that'll what's maybe this boost Rotten you. Tomatoes score? It's pretty high, which is shocking to me. And Because some people, this, some people marketing, think that that payoff is good. But the marketing was that it was like terrifying and like a generational horror thing. And I get that that's technically subjective so maybe you can just say whatever you want but to me it seems just like a lie it doesn't seem like i will say kudos to the marketing team kind of for getting me to go but if you just lie you're technically horrible at your job (laughs) so like they did a good job of getting people to go but i think it was very disingenuous and that is why i was so upset by it because i went based on marketing which you shouldn't do i guess That is kind of on me. No, I heard it was going to be scary. Really scary. But it wasn't scary at all. Outside of the first, like, 15 minutes, then it all just kind of fell apart. Maybe half hour. Whatever. The tension started to keep melting away. And it just got sillier. Yeah. I mean, the scene when he does, when he, Because here's the thing. All this type of stuff was said about Barbarian, and Barbarian 100% lived up to it. That's a good comparison. I didn't really like the ending to that either, but it doesn't matter because the whole part of it leading up to it that was got fucking insane. riveting. That was insane. That movie was masterful. And then the Justin Long part wasn't that good. And then the monster reveal I didn't like. But the creativity alone was through the roof and the tension the entire time. It was so gripping and terrifying. And that I saw at home because I missed it. I waited too long. Yeah. And this, I went to the theater and got more and more disappointed as it went on. And felt tension maybe, again, outside of the first 15 minutes, not very much. And a couple of the, they did occasional like flashes to the little like square film thing again. And Nicolas Cage would be kind of scary there. It'd be like a little jump scare type thing. Mm -hmm. That would get me a little bit. I'm pretty prone to those. But that's it. No true like thrills after the f- second act for sure. The entire third act was a complete failure and to me took me so much out of it that it doesn't make the first two thirds worth it. It right. ruined them. Right. It made them just a lie. Also, this whole thing's about was a big lie. The marketing lied about the movie as a whole and the beginning of the movie lied about what the movie was. (laughs) And that that's just really disappointing. It was really disappointing. 
Um, the floor is yours. I mean, that was riveting. I don't know what to say. So you loved it. I can't convince you, you know. So you thought, th- even though the ending disappointed you, that doesn't ruin the rest of Correct. it for you. Correct, yeah. Okay. That's See, definitely true for me. For me... It can go all the way to, you know... Because I could never watch it again. dumpster fire. I could never watch it end, again knowing how bad that ending is because it'll all be... It's always worthless then. I'm excited to rewatch it for sure. Okay. I feel like it'll be better the second time. Really? Yeah. Now that you know that it's all pointless? Yeah, kind See? of. It makes it kind of like repeatable. Like, like I said, great shots, great camera work, great acting. Yeah. Like I said, Nicolas Cage, the performance was good, but not what you would expect from what you hear about it. Yeah. So, again, that's that also makes it disappointing for me in that regard. But he was still good. I acknowledge that he was still good. Yeah. But there's a scene where he goes to a convenience store. Like... And it's literally just a little skit. Right. There's like slight tension for 10 seconds, and then it's very clear that it's just a comedy scene. And most of the time when he's talking, it's like it's 50-50 if he's doing something horror or comedic, I would say. I think he was going to kidnap that kid if she didn't call for her dad. Correct. That was implied, but it ended up just being funny, you know? I was uncomfortable. It was weird. It was weird, but I I don't know. To me, that wasn't like this terror, the most creative psycho killer you've seen since fucking never. Like you know, <laughs> like it wasn't that. I um I feel like people are gonna say the opposite. Honestly, what he just painted his face like to me, it was like an SNL parody of Heath Ledger's The Joker. That's, that's really good. That's w- all it was. It wasn't this groundbreaking evil experience. Like, yeah. It was nonsense. He was a cartoon character. Um, He didn't fit the tone of the movie at all. The tone of the movie was very ominous and slow and dark. and Like the scene where she's being chased out of her house and stuff. The tension there was great. Yeah. All of that stuff. And then it just completely goes away from all of that. And then all of a sudden it's a very fast paced, almost like actiony thing that isn't very good. That like that pace switch definitely is like another thing that contributed to it losing. Its I think that fire. they didn't have an ending. I don't. Really? They I mean it felt rushed on screen. Yeah. So it must have been written pretty rushed. I don't know. I could see that. It seems like they had two great acts, and they didn't know how to finish it. That's unfortunate. I think it was the guy's first movie. Yeah. He's very capable as a director, clearly, and, hey, get a guy to write it with you next time, maybe. Yeah. Just the third act. Just say you need help on the third act next time. Don't just assume it, even if you think it's good. That's my advice to this guy. (laughs) But solid filmmaker can tell a lot of potential there. It just, what the ending just was not for me. It completely put me off of the whole thing. Yeah, that's real. And then, boom, Donnie's bleeding right after that for me. Word. So, crazy day. Crazy day. Well, I'm sad that you won't rewatch it, but I feel like you maybe you'll get a clip from time to time and you'll think about how much you dislike those, Here's my final thought. Those things. Should have saw Maxine instead. I'm excited for that one. That's going to that be better. Be I've heard that that's disappointing, which means I'll probably like it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this was great, didn't like it. So, if anything has a pattern, I'll probably love Maxine. But we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully next episode. But we'll see. I don't like to commit because I, I just, just might not do it. I wonder what the movie would have been like if they left some of him out of it. You know, I feel like it would be a different movie. If he were more just ominous, lurking in the background. Less. Yeah. We, need him, we needed him less for sure. I just and like, he, should, he should have just had more things to say. He if They made him just a whack job Satan guy instead of having like a deep evil like... 
he could have had a monologue that would have been really powerful to tie it all together of him like truly saying something horrific, you know, but he was just a lunatic. I don't know. It was just silly to me. Yeah, maybe just less dialogue in general would have been good because I just remember the conversations that the two FBI agents were having and I just remember thinking, this is like silly. They're just kind of talking silly. You know? It's silly. It was silly. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. And I thought it was going to be a lot more just tense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like wow. she seemed so stressed that it got silly the whole time. She was just always so upset about everything yeah it was a lot she she needed and a again, day off like where'd the clairvoyance go right it wasn't you clairvoyance know, then the whole time because like oh you're clairvoyant but you don't know your mom has the guy in the basement like right even if he possessed you like come on wouldn't you technically be under his spell the entire time right like you know what i mean like there's you could poke way too many holes and all that Oh, well, I don't remember how she acted after that, ha- after, oh, that was the end of the movie. Right. No. No, it wasn't. No, I'm saying the entire time that she lived in that house, that he was living there. No, no, I'm or just thinking Or is it thinking implied about... that, like, he only moved in when she left? Like, I don't know. It's just all silly. No, I just, like, I'm thinking about when they do, when the head does explode of her doll, the one that her mom shoots. Yeah. Um, she wakes up in the guy's bed. No, I know that, but it makes me think like she was still so tense at the end. Like we, it seems like it's implied that you know something was supposed to be like lifted from her, and she was supposed to be like free in some way, but she wasn't. She still was under the spell of the toy. It didn't make any sense. Which was yeah, it was a different toy, so it's like it just possesses everybody, no matter what. But her mom can just sit there, right, the whole time. Every time. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. And that's why you don't do fucking gay magic. <laughs> Magic's gay. Everybody knows that. <laughs> What's wrong with gay magic? It's not horror. <laughs> oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, it's gay magic. It so needed t- less magic. Tell me it's a magic movie and I won't see it. That's true. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this was going to, you know, I thought it was going to be like a seven type movie. That's what I expected. Like, so. because I am interested in those in the first place, I guess that's why it was less. Like, Maxine is, you know, all of those movies are marketed as they are, which are very like gritty, grindhouse esque B movies on purpose. Like, right. Alluding to dirty, gross movies. Like, it's going to be vulgar and. You know, grainy and all that shit. Right. It's not pretending to be something else, which that's the most important thing. So we'll see. Hopefully next week. Yeah. Right. You got any closing thoughts? Um, We'll wrap this up. Mm, I don't think so. Honestly, I... Give me an out of ten. I give it a seven. That's high. Six and a half. That's... Not as high. Six and a half out of ten. I'll give it like a. I think it'll like, uh, but I'm saying though, I think the repeat value of this movie is there. I'm excited to watch it. Well, at home. you you let me know. I how the rewatch is for sure. I will. I give it a four point two. That's uh, very specific. Yeah, I give real scores. Right on. Not an amateur. Well, I mean. You know, I enjoyed the film. I do this as a hobby, <laughs> but I'm a professional. Um, no, I'm just glad that it ended when it yeah, did. Yeah, I was glad it, it ended. Didn't need to go longer. Uh, it was too long because they fucked it up. I just think that, yeah, the um, the whole doll. If uh, what would it have been like if we had less long legs, more Satan shit? You know, just like do more Satan shit then if you're going to have it in the movie. Started earlier. It just have it have an explanation. I maybe not. I don't need an explanation for everything. It we just need more if you're going to do where. How are you getting the power? It doesn't make any sense. We're done. (laughs) (laughs) No. No, it doesn't make sense. All right. Rate review. Subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday. MicrowaveMinutes.com. MicrowaveMinutes.com. That show comes out <laughs> a couple times a year. 
Every episode's a special. <laughs> That's Basically, correct. there are no more seasons. It's just one special a year, <laughs> two specials a year. <laughs> uh, they come out. Merch, rfet.bigcartel.com. We got music, multiplex, wolfex. Check out all the links in the description. Bio. Below. And uh, whatever. Yeah, check out all the stuff. And remember, I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator.